So what we have here, uh, it's a complete um, AGR system, including the cooler. Uh, we have a bypass, and then we have got this the servo motor. Um, they call it the, the, the EGR valve controller. That's what BMW calls it. Um, so, as I said before, water goes in here and out, you know, through these um, to cool the gases on the controller side here. So, let me focus on the, let me focus on, in the bypass valve I'm trying to zoom in here as you can see when I'm moving see I can actuate it here you see I'm actuating it on my finger okay so you focus in here please see that valve it moves right just wanted to demonstrate that part uh, when it's on the vehicle it's the vacuum it, it is vacuum actuated it's a solenoid comes in here the ECU actuates it allows vacuum and then that vacuum is the one then that pulls it to pull um, this valve open at you know what it will it will allow it to open according to the amount of vacuum that has been allowed to come through by the ecu so the actually the the reason for this bypass is to allow some of the hot gases okay to bypass the bypass that cooler and actually go in uh into the intake manifold uh, just for the purpose of reducing condensation so it will be open mainly when the engine is cold when we start from cold that's when this bypass would be uh, used and then we we have the eg valve or the controller itself okay so it has got five pins one two three four five uh, so p two of the pins they are dedicated you know to uh, to this motor here they call it a servo motor and what it does i would want to say it is bi-directional as well it will go one way and go the other way you know electrically actuated all right so you've got a power then and a ground all right uh for for the motor itself and then the three other wires they are for the position sensor uh because the ecu needs to know the position of this servo motor Okay, how far has it moved? How many turns? It actually counts the number of turns. So you have a fixed uh, hole types effect sensor in there. So we know that a hole type sensor has got three wires. We've got a power. In this case, it's a five volts. It's a five volt reference. And for your servo motor, the power that goes to your servo motor, it is 12 volts. Okay, so the 12 volt is for the servo motor, and then the 5 volt is uh, for the position sensor, which is a whole type position sensor. So we said we have got 5 volt reference for the sensor, we have a signal wire, and we have ground. Okay, they are no longer, they've gone away now from using um, the potentiometers and other things like that. They, they just use these um special sensors like especially the whole type effect sensor uh, it can be a good position sensor um so you 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 you, you can I'm, I'm just telling you so that when you're testing the wires you know you know what you're looking for when you see a 12 volt you know right okay that's my um that's the power you know for for the servo motor and when you see a 5 volt reference you know that that is the power uh for the uh, position sensor so when does this EGR valve or controller when does it open I think that's a good question um, it it will open under two condition load two load conditions first it will open 
during idling. The reason why it opens uh, during idling is because um, we have excess oxygen into the in, into the um, combustion chamber at that time, and also it will open during part load, which is cruising. And again, at that time we have less fuel and we have got more oxygen. And the reason why it opens whenever there is excess of oxygen is because if that oxygen is not taken care of, that oxygen that in excess, it reacts with the heat that is in the combustion chamber. And then that's when nitrogen oxides are now formed. You have nitrogen monoxide, you have nitrogen dioxide. Those are not good gases, okay? So to avert or to avoid that happening, this controller opens up and allows exhaust gases to flow back into the intake manifold, subsequently into the combustion chamber. It mixes with the new fresh charge that is come in. And whenever fuel is put in, burning is not going to be the best. Because now we have these exhaust gases. These are inert gases, mind you. They don't burn as well. The exhaust gases are inert gases. They don't burn as well. So then the, there will be less burning. Okay. That's what produces hydrocarbons. Because there's less burning. There's going to be less burning. And the burning is not going to produce as much heat as it, is, it would have done had the EGR valve not opened. So that reduces the temperatures. The other thing that would help as well in reducing the temperatures is this cooler. When we, the gases are cooled before they go in, so the, the, the cooler extracts heat, which could have been which have been, could have been sent into the combustion chamber, where we are actually trying to reduce the heat, but we are sending hot gases. So the idea of cooling those gases is to efficiently reduce the temperatures in the combustion chamber so that nitrogen oxides are not formed. Okay? I hope that is clear. So, uh, to finish off, whenever this controller or EGR valve controller opens, I don't care by how much. It could be just by slight. You remember, it, this, it shows on your scan tool the percentages of, uh, you know, how much it has opened. So whenever it opens, please, technicians, if you haven't noticed this, and you apprentices as well, you watch your air mass meter. You'll notice that every time your EGR valve opens, your S A mass meter reading reduces. It is remember we are now sending extra gases that are not accounted by the um, A mass meter, so we have to do something with the A mass meter. Um, so what happens? You see the A mass meter reading will reduce, and then these gases will now go into the combustion chamber to cater for the reduction on the air mass meter side so that we have enough for the volume of that particular cylinder. Hey, um, I was almost going to bite my tongue there. There's a lot to explain. Uh, but to be honest with you, that's how the EGR valve works. The cooler is just there to take away heat from the gases so that when the gases go into the combustion chamber, you are not going to have an effect of heat rising up you know, because the whole idea of sending exhaust gases in there is to try and reduce the heat because the heat is the one that causes the formation of nitrogen oxide by reacting, uh, by the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen. The catalyst in this case being the heat. And it, it happens around, uh, around 2000, thereabouts, you know, from 2000 degrees, you know, Celsius. That's when the formation of um, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide, you know, takes place. Wow. Um, uh, I hope I've explained myself, you know, as a shooter. You, 
you you when you're teaching someone you 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 want to exhaust um every aspect of the component you're talking about but if there are any questions uh feel free to send me those questions uh if there are any additions that you would want to add to what i've said uh, i know i may not have said everything uh please uh feel free to you know to to add to that uh, if i can just say the last thing it is about um you know the p0401 it's a it's a trouble called usually it is uh, insufficient flow so if the ecu knows that the egr valve has opened okay and then it reduces the amount of air coming through uh, the intake manifold and then nothing goes through to compensate for what has gone into the cylinder that's when you see a code p0401 exhaust gas insufficient flow i thank you i hope these explanations will help somebody down the line. Thank you.